here at PFL Playoffs. Um, first off, um, how much does it mean to you to have this opportunity to be here in the playoffs in your second season? And uh, what has the quick turnaround been just four weeks after facing uh, Stevie Ray? Yeah, I actually like the quick turnaround, man. I think it, like the season format keeps us busy. Um, I, the crazy thing was having two fights booked back to back, you know, like going into that last fight, knowing I had this fight coming up. Um, the mindset was like not get hurt, try to point for him. And I came out with my traditional Taekwondo stance, did the you know, flashy kicks, but uh, I, I found out it was the wrong, the wrong mindset for these fights. And then in terms of the four-week turnaround, um, what are camps like when there's such a quick turnaround like that? Does it change up the flow in camp, or, or what is that whole experience the, like? the camp actually started in December. Mm -hmm. you know, I think you know I learned last season that you can't just do a two-month training camp or a four-week training camp. So I started in December. Um, we kind of knew who was in the division already and like what to expect, a lot of southpaws. So um, I got some southpaw sparring partners in, in there with me. Eric Koch, actually, one of my old teammates. Uh, he's you know, been living with me for a couple weeks now. Um, it's been a good training camp. You know, I, I, nothing really changes besides the mindset. Mm -hmm. Last well, question for me. Um, you and I have talked a lot about um, the naysayers coming into this season. Anthony Pettis, you know, is he still the same guy? How much does it mean to you to be in this position, and how much does that motivate you to um, move forward? Yeah, I like being the underdog, actually. You know, I think in my career I was the underdog a lot. You know, going into my title fights in the UFC, even WEC, I was the underdog. So um, I like having my back against the wall. I think um, – in this, in this format, you know, like I said, having them two fights booked back to back, knowing I had a guaranteed playoff spot, it made that last fight it's just a little, a little cloudy. I've never been in that position before, and uh, you know, I, I learned from their mistakes. Hey, yeah, thank you, Breezy. The MMA Breezy. Um, your last fight, you know, obviously it ended in an injury, but uh, when it was over, Stevie Ray he expressed concerns of you making it to the second bout. Here you are getting ready to fight him in the rematch. How are you feeling overall, health wise? I feel amazing, man. Actually, you know, in that fight, I had a split decision to make. You know, it was like, do I let the rib pop? Because I was in a bad spot. You know, he definitely had me in a good compromised position. I tried to do a back escape, and I didn't clear his body triangle. But the crazy thing is, I initiated that takedown. You know, he couldn't take me down in that fight. I was winning the stand up, and when I look back at it, it's just kind of frustrating to see that that amateur move that I made. You know, initiating a dumb takedown like that. Um, my body's healthy. I'm here. I'm about to be on weight. Um, I feel good, ready to go. Heck yeah! And uh, what do you, what do you see going differently in this fight, if anything? Mindset, man. I'm gonna go in here, and bite down on my mouthpiece, look for the finish. Last fight, you know, I went. I, I usually fight guys in the open stance. You know, where he's a southpaw, I go orthodox. I fought him southpaw just because I was trying to point spar my my taekwondo stance, and I was like, let's not get hurt and make it out of this fight. And uh, you know, I just got put in a position that I wasn't expecting. Thank you, thank you and good luck. Thanks, Anthony. I'm just curious. Out of your long career, how is this your first rematch? It's not my first rematch. I actually fought Ben Henderson twice and Cowboy Cerrone twice. So third rematch. But, uh, yeah, first one I lost. You know, so this is my mm -hmm. first time losing a fight and rematching That's guys. different. Yeah. And I'm just curious, two wins away, do you feel with those two wins it's kind of a F you to Dana? No, nah, man. Dana's actually a good friend of mine, man. Dana, I, Dana helped me buy my mom a house, you know, so I'm ever for, forever grateful to Dana White. We're still friends, we still talk. I live in Vegas, so I see him all the time, man. So yeah, I would, it's not an F you to Dana at all. It's just more of a legacy for me. <laughs> and how's uh, Sergio holding up? Yeah, he tore his ACL, so he's about, um, I think he has to wait till this this championship plays out, the tournament in Bellator, so I, I don't think we'll see him until next year. Um, he's going to Bali for his birthday, so he's, he's, he's living life. Thanks. And Anthony, um, Miles from Boogie's Basement. About that rematch with Benson Henderson, how it compares to this? How does your mindset change going into an immediate rematch instead of having over a year to prepare? Yeah, I mean, I won the first Ben Henderson fight. This one I lost, so like the mindset is like redemption. Um, you know, like I said, that fight, it was weird having two fights booked back to back. I'd never been in that position where I was like, you know, I can guarantee the playoff spot, and I kind of had a, a gimme fight. Not a gimme fight, but a fight that was like, didn't really matter in, in, for, the, for the championship. Um, so I think, you know, my mindset is to finish this guy. You know, go out there and, and not points for him. Go out there and finish this guy. And um, what's it like to finally be a promoter yourself and putting on an event in your hometown? Oh, man, it's amazing. You know, I, I did Florida first just to make sure I had something and I could, you know, because I know Milwaukee would be easy to put a show on in. Um, but now that I'm going to Milwaukee, we sold out already. But, uh, I'm expecting a great turnout. And the, the level of talent that I got to put, you know, give them a, a stage to, to, to perform on, it's amazing, you know, like, uh, Algo Husik was on my Florida card, and he got signed to the PFL. So that's my first guy that came from the KPFC to a big organization. Anthony, so, just a follow-up question. Now that you're a fighter, that you're still a fighter promoter and have your own management team, do you feel also that you may have to take one step out of fighting and go full-time as being a promoter? I mean, eventually fighting is going to be over, man. So, I mean, I, I definitely always, you know, have, I've had businesses for a long time from sports bars, barbershops to my gyms. 
Um, but this is more of like a, a legacy thing that I'm a Leo on this for. You know, like I, when I was up and coming, I was collecting like Harley Davidson dealerships and, and bo sports bars, you know, it, it, to get my chance at, at the big shows. Now these guys are fighting on a stage where the whole world gets to see them. Like these guys are relatively unknown and they, they get to a chance to, you know, become known in, in the, the world of mixed martial arts. And you talk about with, when you won the titles at the UFC, you talk about when you were in the bleachers. Now that you are moving on in your career and the things that you want to do for the future, what is the inspiration you want to give to those people coming up as they will try to get in the game? Man, anything is possible. I mean, it's even being here right now, you know, like I've had a long career. I got lucky with a long career, man. I think it's the 17th year fighting professionally um, and, and across a lot of promotions. You know, I've been the champ in most of the promotions I've been in except for this one. So, uh, uh, you know, anything is possible. Keep, keep, keep dreaming and, and keep working and, and anything's possible. Thank you. Anthony, uh, how do you feel the PFL has been treating you after having such a long career in the UFC? Amazing, man. Uh, I think, you know, the, f the first season was uh, rough just because of COVID and the restrictions and having to be at a hotel for like three weeks before a fight and then turning back around. So, like, the, the amount of money they spent to host, you know, these three, the three or four fight cards last year and, and have their teams in there feeding the teams, like, they actually take care of their athletes. Yeah, so I, I would say everything has been amazing with the PFL. Thank you. Anthony, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, man, go ahead. Uh, Eddie from Five Bananas. I just wanted to say, last show was in Orlando, now you're going to Milwaukee. Do you already have a location for your next APFC? Yeah, we're going to Las Vegas. Awesome. Yep, so we're going to Las Vegas, we're going to the West Coast. I did East Coast, Midwest, and then we're going West Coast. Awesome, and do you still see that you're going to bring people towards PFL and UFC, or all branches all, all around? All branches, man. I'm just giving these kids the opportunity to shine, you know, because like the, the local MMA scene's growing crazy. You know, there's so many good promotions out there. LFA is a great one. I mean, there's, there's promotions that are giving these guys a good stage, and I'm just adding to that. Awesome. Thank hey, you. Anthony, so uh, does being the underdog for the first time in your PFL career change your outlook on this fight? And also, are you looking to place a little money on that, perhaps? I can't bet on myself, but yeah. I would if I did. <laughs> but, uh, all right, all right. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, being the underdog in this fight, it makes sense. You know, he beat me the last fight just a couple weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if you watch the fight, I was winning the stand-up. He could not take me down. I initiated that takedown, and uh, I just got caught. Right, so to your point, actually watching that fight live back on the train up here, they were showing the live odds as you're in that body lock. I mean, you were minus 230 on the live odds. So to your point, I mean, I think you were ahead early. Do, do you come in with some confidence coming back into this matchup? You made a little mistake mentally, and you know, you're here to finish the yeah, job this time? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, the way I fought him, I mean, I, I don't fight. Well, like I said, if I fight a guy, it's usually open stance. If they're orthodox, I fight solid ball just because that, that my kicks are, are very dangerous. My striking is very dangerous. Um, you know, I went in that mindset, that fight, point sparring. I was like, let, even my coaches were like, let's, let's coast through this. We got to fight in five weeks. Let's not get hurt. And let's let's fight the fight that matters, which is this one. Thank you, uh, Anthony. August twelfth, of course, is when APFC two goes down. Has it been difficult maybe to manage the promotion of that and development of that card and your training camp for uh, Stevie Ray? Not at all. I got a great team behind APFC. That you know, I, I barely have my, my job in there is just to promote. You know, I go in there, I, I make sure the city's coming out, and uh, in Milwaukee was kind of very easy. That's why we kind of matched these two up. Mm -hmm. Milwaukee, we knew we were going to sell out. We sold out like really quick. Our VIP tables. Um, I think we're expecting like 2,500 people, in, in, you know, in, at a local show, which is good. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, the, the the talent that's coming in, like the guys that we're dealing with, are all, all most of our guys. So it's very easy for us to manage. Now, your grandpa on your mom's side has 17 uh, siblings, of course, right? That's 17 a lot. kids. Yeah. Kids, right? Um, having such a big extended family, what's that been like during your life? Man, it's crazy. You know, like uh, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans. So my, my mom's yeah. Mexican, and my dad's Puerto Rican, and my dad has eight siblings, and my mom has 17. Well, 19. If you just found out she has two more. My grandpa's been busy, man. Like, I, 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 I got, like, an uh, uh, uncle that's, like, 12, you know, so it's, 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 it's crazy. To, it's crazy. He's still going. And last for me, Anthony, just reflecting, what do you think your dad would have made of your mixed martial arts career? Man, just watching uh, Danny Garcia fight, him and his pops, the way they are and, and the way they, you know, he is in his interviews. My dad was just like that, you know, Puerto Rican dude, very outspoken, um, good, good fighter in his own right, you know, so I think um, that's where me and my brother get our fighting skills from is my dad. Uh, but he was, you know, killed obviously in a house robbery when I was a kid. So I think, um, you know, I missed out on that. But you know, it made me the man I am today. Best uh, luck, champ. Anthony, uh, Elgin Wolf from the Fight Dialogue. I see you tapped into the grappling as well. Uh, your team won the grappling invitational yep. UFC Fight Pass. Um, talk to me about that experience. You're looking to get more into that as well, too. Um, I mean, they they offered a, it was like fight show versus fight show. You know, mm -hmm. UFC Fight Pass has you know James Krause, Uriah Faber, and Masvidal. We all have fight shows, so it was like it made sense to have like these guys, um, I guess, headline headline that that grappling event. It was actually a cool experience, you know. I I, I couldn't compete just because the PFL comes first right now, and my objective is to become a champion in this organization. 
Um, but you know, the team I brought in was some killers, bro. Like a lot of guys, they didn't know about them, dude. Like the giant guy, like the big guy. Yeah, he's a train wreck. Bro. Yeah, bro, he's a monster. <laughs> yeah. you know? So I, I was like, I, all everybody was like, Nick, Nick, uh, I forget the guy's name, uh, Moscow Scott, one of the wrestlers. He was like overcoming for that Logan twenty-five. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That twenty-five G's. And I'm like, man, I don't. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and yeah, we, we we did it. And um, to to touch on another thing, um, you spoke about this before, the mental health aspect. Danny Garcia came out recently about that. Patty yeah, Pimple talked about that. Talk to me about what it's like more athletes are speaking more about this issue. It's good, man. I think even uh, like Patty, you know, Patty Pimple coming out and talking about men's mental health, bro. It's like, you know, especially as, as fighters, we're, we're looked at as like these like macho guys that, you know, if anything happens and we just make it through, man. A lot of emotions come into these fights, you know, like winning, like my career, bro. I was like, on top of the world on a Wheaties box and I lose three fights in a row right after that. So, like, there's a lot of emotion that goes back into that and um, a lot of dark times, bro. Like, I've, I've had some dark times in my career where, my support system really helped me through. So yeah, I think it's it's great that people are speaking out about it and to see their Danny me and Danny are good friends. Um I know what he goes through too as well, man. Like there's a lot of pressure on us as as, as athletes and as fighters and uh, we kinda get overlooked in that in that sense. Thank you. Anthony, um you've talked a bit before about how the plan is when this season's over, you want to box. Is that still on your, your radar? I, I definitely want to box before I'm done fighting. Um I'm working with Jorge Capatillo, still big part of my training camps. I'm um, seeing him and his little son, bro. Dylan Capatillo, you guys got to look out for that kid. He's going to be a monster, uh, the way he trains. But, uh, yeah, I definitely want to box before this is over. Before before I hang up the gloves, I, I will have a boxing match. What did you make of the whole situation this week? There was a fight the, the next night after you with uh, with Jake Paul, who's obviously close enough to your career, having fought yeah, in a couple yeah. of years. Your boys, what did you make of that whole situation with the, the weight and the cancellation? It sucks, man, because these guys actually, you know, Jake Paul is actually training for these fights, you know, and I think, uh, you know, he, he had a couple opponents drop out on him. Um, I know Nikisa very well, so, you know, mm -hmm. Nikisa, with the, the guy who's actually the promoter of, of Jake Paul, well, helping Jake Paul promote, um, I think uh, it sucks that they, they lost out. You know, I think uh, a lot of people would have came out for that. I was planning on staying to watch that, but, you know, now it's, that it's not happening. I'm headed back home. Was there a chance you went, hey, I'll, I'll rehydrate after my weight. Could I go up to 170 the next day and maybe I'll go the next day? Man, I fight at like 170, 178 when I'm rehydrated. Yeah, so, yeah, you could have made that, that little sure, spot, Jake. Uh, you mentioned uh, Nikisa as well. Sorry to, to ask a, a little bit more, but, but you mentioned it. Uh, do you think there's a chance, obviously, nickname Showtime, he's on Showtime Boxing, maybe you sit down with Nikisa at some point this week and maybe say, hey, how about I get on one of these cards? I just texted Nikisa, actually, and I saw a response that he, you know, put out towards, uh, I think, Dana White said some stuff about, you know, he couldn't sell enough tickets, and, um, man, it's, I, I support all, all these brands, man, like, the, the more options these fighters have, the more opportunities we have, and I, I, I'm, I like what they're doing, you know, I like what Jake Paul's, you know, he's, he's, he wants fighters to get paid more, and he's, you know, a big advocate of that, and uh, that's only, you know, better for us as fighters. Anthony, you've had a miraculous career as a fighter, accomplished nearly everything. What is there you feel left to do? And then in your promotional career, what would you like to accomplish? Like, what would be the pinnacle of that? Well, I think I was a champ in every organization I fought in, so I, I definitely need this one, you know, to, to, to cement my legacy as, as one of the late, late, you know, best, the best there ever was. Um, Promotional-wise, um, I just want to give these guys an opportunity. Like, you know why? Like, that's, that's why I'm in that side of it. You know, I, I've, I've seen – how these lower level fighters get treated and, and there's a, there's a uh, you know the sports are growing where like there's enough money for this to change. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You good? That's, thank you. All right guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.